Hello and welcome to Toneless Paintings by M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting we are doing today is called Dawn Meadow and it is an 8x8. Uh, we did the study for this in our previous uh, post um, and uh, as I discussed there, this is a scene I've painted quite a few times. I've done it as a horizontal um, in a rectangular format, both as probably a long time ago, maybe 2009 as a uh, six by nine, which was a size I was really into at that time um, on a maple panel. And that is actually in my hallway here at my home. Um, and then later I've done it as a five by five and a five by seven. And uh, again, it's an eight by 10 and an eight by eight. And this is actually the second time I've done it as an eight by eight. So um, the reason being is that I had uh, sold the previous eight by eight and I just, I really missed that painting. I just wanted to have another copy of it around. And um, there's a lot, uh, this is a very simple uh, motif. It's not much to it really. Um, it's just two trees with some light and some grass. Um, but I, I'm very fascinated by it. it. It really in so many ways speaks to the type of thing that I really think painting should be, which is really not so much about the subject, but about the light, about the composition, about the structure, um, you know, and uh, not so much like, well, oh, this is a painting of a tree, you know, well, in this case, it's like a painting of, I guess it's a scene, right? It's a morning scene. Um, and as I discussed, uh, I think in last week, I was talking about how I I drove out to get this reference, and I'm hoping um, uh, well, while I'm on vacation to get some really good early morning type reference since um, I'll be a bit discombobulated and I won't be in my normal routine. I actually adore uh, morning um, light, and uh, I love that sideways light and how it will just dapple here and dapple there, uh, but I confess that in my normal routine I I generally like to get up around 7 to 7.30 and uh, and then I, I usually get to work and uh, uh, anyway maybe that'll change uh, one day um, it would be good to, to definitely get out and, and it's not like I need actually tons of reference since like I said I've painted this maybe six times from that one uh, bit of photo I have and that photo I've manipulated in lots of different ways too actually but um, so um, I am recording this in September, actually September 18th to be precise, uh, but it's going to be going up probably, uh, I think I've scheduled it for October 23rd, so um, the reason I'm doing that is so that, uh, because uh, I think it's going to be difficult to uh, not only edit these videos while I'm uh, on vacation, but to upload them from wherever I might be, you know, here at my home I have fiber optic cable and uh, everything's very quick and very tidy and actually that's one of the reasons that I've been able to um, increase the size of my uh, rendered videos for uh, YouTube. I'm at uh, I think 720 by 1238 or something now and that's up from the 480 by 360 so quite a big improvement for you guys and I hope you're really uh, digging the extra detail and quality. Um, there is an actual additional layer of quality in the original videos uh, that I do, uh, which is, you know, 1080 by, oh goodness, I don't know, you know, it's the, it's standard high def though, uh, that you see in uh, all video cameras and things like that these days. Um, much bigger than that, and you know, I really, I, I already have hard drive, hard drive issues uh, with these videos like you wouldn't believe. That's one of the reasons why um, when I archive my paintings um, I archive them at double speed because to archive everything at single speed. Uh, and then in that archive file I take all the individual sh sessions that I videotaped and I composite them together um, and basically I render those at the full, the full resolution but the speed is doubled. Uh, for a video like you're seeing today, the speed is maybe seven, eight times faster than I actually painted it. So, um, just, you know, 
be great. Uh, I and I, I don't know about the cloud. You know, I, I do utilize the cloud. I have a one one drive account, and I really like it for trading files between work and home, between the studio and my office here at home. But uh, other than that, I'm I'm old school. I like to keep my data on personal hard drives, and that way, uh, there's never a question as to who owns it. So you can call me an old paranoid dude, but I don't really trust the cloud. Um, so. What do you want to talk about? We've got another maybe five minutes to kill here. And uh, I've already posted a, a video I'm doing today that was a scene uh, called uh, Forest Path. And uh, that's up there on YouTube for you guys right now. Um, and I will be finishing up the blog post for that soon. Uh, Ed, while I was talking about the video, I was talking about the week I had. And I'd mentioned that uh, I was working on the second pass of a series of. Uh, six paintings I'm doing and, and in that first pass I had painted much thicker than I had been in the past and uh, this what I didn't get to is to say that this week uh, I was getting into my second pass and um, as I stated uh, probably a couple videos back I uh, intend to stop at two passes in all these paintings um, so there's a couple of reasons for that one is the tendency to just keep overworking things and with the dry brushing I've been playing with things tend to get very soft and that's not that's not good that's not an effect I really want um, and it's easy to fall into because you apply it to one area and it's very easy to keep moving along and do it everywhere across the board so I've uh, opted uh, for you know I can always keep working on the painting I mean how I, I, when is it really ever done you know it's done when you say it's done and it's really good to leave things sort of fresh, a little unformed, not completely overdone. Uh, that's always good, and and even knowing that, you can overwork things. But I've had a good week. I've done maybe uh, five of that six that I finished this week, um, which is really positive. I'll end up with. Uh, I think I'm gonna maybe try and squeeze a couple more in before I uh, leave for vacation in about ten days or so. Um, I'm thinking of instead of doing six, I'm thinking of setting up maybe two or three uh, to see if I can actually. Uh, and I'm there, I'm also thinking of painting those on top of some old paintings that were less than successful, um, which is a great feeling, uh, especially when the redone painting looks good and it's on top of a painting you weren't happy with. It's like um, not only do you get a kind of nice effect from having that other painting little peek, little bits peeking through here and there, plus the paint goes on a little different, um, but the best thing is, the absolute best thing is, is you don't have a painting sitting around that every time you look at it you kind of go, ah, well, I'm, I'm not happy with that, you know. So I've got this like in a box off to the side. Um, I guess another thing I, I can discuss is that uh, I recently got a bunch of uh, track lighting for my um, studio at the Quarry Art Center, and one of the um, the neat things about my studio is that it's open to the public. I do get people uh, coming and visiting the art center, and uh, you know, a lot of people are just I mean, whatever. They, if they, they if they even come, they, some of them don't even come in. They're scared to, but. Uh, and uh, those that come in, you know, a lot of them don't have much to say, but it's always nice uh, sometimes when, uh, you know, someone comes in and you're, finds your work really moving, even, you know, if they can't afford to buy a painting or whatever. Or, and then sometimes uh, people come in that are traveling, you have, you have wonderful conversations. And uh, I love to get deep and philosophical, and I love to talk about art, and I love to talk about the meaning of existence. And uh, I also love to give uh, young people advice they weren't asking for. I figure as uh, somebody that's uh, arrived to the ripe old age of 51 that uh, that's my prerogative and uh, not having any children of my own I, uh, I like to share my wisdom with um, young people whenever I can and I guess my predominant message to all young people is uh, don't trade your dreams for money you know make sure and pursue uh, something that you have passionate that you're passionate about and if you're not pa pa passionate about something um, you know, get up, get off of your your ass and pick something and, and learn about it and get, and get passionate. It really doesn't matter what it is, but what matters is you have to live life with passion. You need to be engaged with this uh, game we call life. You know, that's the point. You need to play the game. You can't just be a spectator and uh, 
sit there uh, constantly with your uh, head and your phone being entertained 24-7 by the creative works of other people. You need to get in there, get involved, and, uh, you know, I believe anyone can do art, too. Uh, maybe it's uh, maybe it's crafts, maybe it's clay, maybe it's carving. Uh, it doesn't have to be painting. It could be anything, but it's a natural human ability. Uh, everyone should be engaged in it. So anyway, I can see we're getting close to the end here. Thanks for joining us today. Um, uh, be sure and come back next week. We'll have another video for you and uh, another blog post. Um, if you'd like to see more of my work, go to landscapepainter.co.nz. Check it out. There's a lot of stuff there. You can follow this blog uh, there. Uh, access to all my videos there. You name it. Anyway, uh, see you next week. Meanwhile, take good care and stay out of trouble.